Hello everyone, welcome to Make a Link. Before starting this lecture, I would like to inform you that this lecture is a demo version of our full course. You can access the full course at our website makealink.com with many other features like quizzes after every lecture, e-notes and discussion forum to discuss the doubt you may have. All the courses are provided at an unbelievable starting price of Rs. 1 per day that is Rs. 365 per year. Further, we go by the name make a link on Facebook and YouTube so you can reach us there too for any query. Now let's move on to the lecture. This is the ninth lecture of design of reinforced concrete structure. In this lecture we will learn design of doubly reinforced beam. As you know in previous lecture I introduced you doubly reinforced beam with basic concept and an example or analysis. Now in this lecture firstly you will learn about the design concept of doubly reinforced beam and then procedure of designing and finally as you always do an example on designing. So now begin with first part that is design concept. As I explained you earlier that we use doubly reinforced beam where the cross section dimension of beam are restricted by various factors and where singly reinforced beam cannot resist the applied moment. So in doubly reinforced beam we provide tension as well as compression reinforcement. As you know that we provide stir up in beam. The important point here is that stir up either may be open like this or it may be closed. But if we provide compression reinforcement then stir up must be closed. Because closed stir up prevent possible buckling and also provide some ductility by confinement of concrete. I mean by restricting the concrete. Now let's understand the design formula for doubly reinforced beam. This is the cross section of W reinforced beam and let's say these all are the tension reinforcement of area AST and the area of compression reinforcement is ASC. The breadth of beam is B and effective depth is small d. The depth of compression reinforcement from upper compression fiber is say that D dash. Our main purpose is to design W reinforced beam in a way that depth of neutral axis xu cannot exceed the limiting depth of neutral axis xu limiting. To achieve this, we resolve the total design moment into two components. mu is equal to mu limiting, consider it as a singly reinforced beam plus delta mu. Here, mu limiting is limiting moment capacity of singly reinforced beam, considering the limiting moment area of steel that is AST limiting as you can see here that this section is without compression steel. Delta MU additional moment which is resist by additional compression steel ASC and also corresponding additional tensile steel delta AST. The important point here is that the contribution of concrete compression strength is only considered for this component MU limited. It does not contribute to delta mu. The distribution of concrete strain is identical for both the components. Here epsilon st is the strain in tension steel and ultimate strain epsilon cu 0.0035 similar to singly reinforced beam. As you know that steel in compression side also have a strain. Let's say it is epsilon sc. But stresses for both components will be different. As you can see here that for first component the stress profile is similar as we already learned in previous lectures. Here we also consider the compressive stress FSC induced in compression steel. Second component here behave like steel beam. Forces in compression steel will be FSC minus 0.45 FCK into ASC as we did in previous lecture. And in tension steel, it will be 0.87 Fy into delta AST. And the strength between these two stresses is D minus D dash. So here we can find out the total tension steel required as AST is equal to AST limiting plus delta AST. Or in another way, we can say that PT is total percentage of tension steel. Then we can write it as PT is equal to PT limiting 
plus delta Pt. Here we convert the area of steel into percentage form. Now question arises: how to find out the area of steel in WB. I mean we have to calculate AST limiting, delta AST and ASC. AST limiting will be similar to singly reinforced beam. Here I would recommend you use the percentage formula for tension steel that is PD limiting is equal to 41.61 FCK upon F5 into actual limiting upon D and we can calculate it very easily because actual limiting upon D value will be given in IS456 according to grade of steel then FCK and FY already given in question it will be very easy and very short formula and for delta AST we can find out the delta MU from a couple comprising a compressive force and tensile force with lever arm D minus D dash. Let's say from tension side that delta MU is equal to MU minus MU limiting and it will be 0.87 Fy into delta AST into D minus D dash. And further we can find out the value of delta AST it will be MU minus MU limiting upon 0.87 Fy into D minus D dash. And to find out the area of compression reinforcement ASC, we can use equilibrium concept because the area of delta ASC already find out. So we can say here that 0.87 Fy into delta ASC will be equal to FSC minus 0.45 FCK into ASC. And further we can find out ASC as 0.87 Fy into delta ASC upon FSC minus 0.45 FCK. So using this formula we can calculate the area of steel in easy way. Here we can also take help from SP16 design code as we did earlier. Sorry guys for the interruption but as we told you earlier this is a demo lecture. To see this complete lecture visit our website. Thank you.